Okay, guys. So you guys know I did the unboxing of the um, Ultimate Card Making Compendium by Crafters Companion. Super cute. I mean, it has a lot of fun things in it. You know, people are questioning the value. That's up to you. Um, I'm going to try it out today. We'll see what's up. So these are the, kind of the color theory that's going on with this specific um, kit. In the auto ships through HSN, uh, there will be more, I believe, cutting dies next time around. And then after that, it's just more papers and color wheels and other items that will go along with that um, ribbon and more things like that. So what I have set up here, and I just should pan down. I'm just in my kitchen. Not my kitchen, my dining room because... I don't know where else to put all this stuff. So what I did was I brought in um, a glass mat that I have usually on my desk in my craft room. I have some glues, different glues. I have some scissors. I got some, you know, a stamp pad, which I'm kind of surprised they didn't at least include a little acrylic block, like a little cheesy one. But I guess because they do that rock a block, they're not going to, I don't know. They could have included something like this because they're like, oh, this is all you need and you go. But no, you don't. You need <laughs> a stamping block. You need inks. I just grabbed a black ink. I have various scissors, I have cutting tools like a guillotine cutter, a regular paper cutter, a paper trimmer, um, and then the items that are obviously in the package. So, um, you know, it comes with a DVD. I have not looked at this, and I'll, I'll probably take time to check it out because why not, but it's basically talking about the color theory and how you would pair things up. So I'm going to be missing this right now because I'm not going to take the time to watch this because I think it's a couple hours long, but I will check that out um, soon. So in this uh, video, I did get the uh, Gemini Mini along with the Compendium. So I'm going to be reviewing this and also using, obviously, whatever is in here that makes a nice card. So um, I did unpackage this yesterday. I wasn't able to stick it back in here. I just shoved it all together. Um, the basic kit comes with a purple plastic shim, your plastic folder, which is the system that you're going to be cutting with. It's the folder system. Some information, nuts. Too much. I mean, it's pretty basic. It's basically the, the dye, the paper. You put it in your sandwich and you put it in there. Um, it does have some information here about the purple shim. Um, it looks like you use the purple shim too. So, hmm, which is kind of interesting. I don't know. Because you would think if it has a folder, the folder would be the right size for what you need. But maybe that just gives it a little bit more oomph because it's a larger area, a larger cutting area. So you want some more stability. I don't know. So let's open this up just so that we have this ready to go. And of course I'm going to be using the dies and papers that are in here. I am going to try the envelope maker for you guys. I don't know if that requires larger paper because the paper, the largest size of paper in here, I think it might be, usually they include 8x8 paper, but this box is kind of big. So maybe it's a 10x10. 10 10. We'll see. I didn't uh, review that part of it. I just did the unboxing yesterday. So here's our little guy. And she said it doesn't matter if you turn it this way or if you turn it this way, if you're left-handed, right-handed, however you want to turn it. I mean, it's the same either way, right? It looks the same if you use it this way or if you use it this way. So that's cool. I do like that. I am right-handed, so I'll probably use it this way. And then when you press it down, I don't know, I put it in the corner. It's a really good suction. This is, wow, look at that. Okay, obviously it's a glass mat. It's kind of heavy. It's holding onto it really well. So it has great suction. <laughs> so hopefully you can see that. I'm going to this logic because we're going to use it in a little bit. Um, so let me, um, I wasn't really sure what I want to do with the camera because we have to pick things, right? We have lots of things to pick. And yes, I have some old bananas back there. I'm getting a little, <laughs> a little older. My kids, I'm telling you the kitchen, you guys know, I'm sure it's the same at your home. Um, dining room table, kitchen counters, it's just stuff. Kids stuff, projects, whatever else they need. I'm going to put these things aside. Ugh, I don't know where to put this stuff, to be honest, because this is going to be really big when we open this guy up. Again, take the lid off. Very sturdy, really nice. I'm going to have to pretty much go through this and basically pick what it is that we want to do. I don't know that the color wheel is that important to me at the moment, but maybe I will use this just so we can say, okay, we're going to use yellow, blue, and teal, or whatever, however we're going to use this. I'm going to pick one of these designs to work with. Um, so this is a 6x6 six six card base, it's a 4x6 card base, you know, it just depends what we want to do. Since we do want to use some cutting and some other stuff, maybe we're using... We have to use something that's going to have a, quite a few things on it, right? A sketch that has a lot of things. So I'll choose that in a minute. I'm not going to go through everything again because I already did that in the unboxing. So let's grab this. Um, I think what we just have to do is decide what it is that we want to do. So let me go through. Again, this is all the like embellishment stuff and as you open it up give this middle part some support because you don't want it to just fall down 
And if you're going to try to access everything at once, you really have to open it up so that you can actually get to this, which is our embossing folders, which we need to try. So let's, what, how about we do this? At first, we'll put the Gemini Mini through the paces. We'll try embossing. We'll try the regular 3D, regular, um, cutting out some of the uh, dies. And then we will go through this. I'll pick out some papers to make a card. And, um, and also, what else is in here to try out? The envelope, this guy, to make the envelope and the notcher and all that. So we will definitely try all that out. So let me grab some of the dies. Let me grab some paper. I don't know that the paper that comes in here is what we want to use here. Let me see. So it's not, I, I'm not sure that it's cardstock type paper, but let's give it a feel. It is layering weight. I don't know that I would want to emboss this. Um, we can try it because supposedly you want to use what's in the box, right? So, okay, we're going to emboss on this and we're going to also use this for the die cutting. So let me grab some pieces, let me get things opened up and we will try out the Gemini Mini first and then we'll put together a card. Okay, real quick because I do need to pick papers to cut. I was just kind of looking at the color wheel and I kind of messed with it and I think I'm just going to go yellow and purple. These complementary colors because they're right across from each other and that'll be easy. And of course my lighting starting to change. It does this every time around 10 o'clock. Um, It'll be fine. <laughs> but uh, so I'm gonna use, and what I wanted to show you is that this is violet and this is red violet, right? So when I was picking, I'm like, oh, there are two different shades of purple here. Um, and there are a few different shades of yellow. So when I put this color wheel here, this purple, even though it's purple, it's more of a red violet. It blends into this side. And then the purple that I actually chose, this one, put it in here, it is a purple tone. So I thought that was kind of interesting, kind of cool. So I'm just grabbing the papers. They are, um, they have a little sheen to them. Like if you put it in the sun, there's a little sheen on the paper, even though it looks flat. So it's a nice, nice little paper. But let me, again, finish grabbing what it is that we need and we'll get started. Okay guys, so like I said, I'm gonna go with yellow and purple. I'm gonna sit down. If you guys happen to see me, I have no makeup on and let's just ignore that. Let's just pretend that that's not happening. Let me turn this this way so I can see what we're filming. Okay, um, again, I have all the items here. I have this stuff sitting in front of me. I don't need that quite yet. I'm gonna open this up so we have our purple plastic shim and this little guy you guys remember when i did the gemini go and it cut through the rubber embossing mat that was too funny and people were like oh i hear that's what it does <laughs> like shouldn't do that but that's what it did so let me put this here we're gonna stick this down right here okay that should be good oh you know what i got this sweater from splendid it's a company i think True Religion or Seven owns it or they bought Seven, I don't know. But um, everything that they have is like super soft and it feels good on basically is their whole story. So if you ever have a Splendid in your mall or hear about it or wanna order online, it's good stuff. Some of it's a little elderly good looking but they have some young stuff. All right, I'm gonna do like this flower one. This is a 3D folder. And let me see about the embossing folders if they need the purple shim also. Cutting die, 3D folder, no shims or plastic folder. And if you're doing a 2D folder, you still need the purple shim. Oh, okay. I totally read this wrong. Remember earlier, I was like, you still need to use the shim. So if you're using a cutting die, it's just the die and the paper, put it in your folder, run it through. 3D folder, just the 3D folder and the paper, run it through. But if you're using a 2D folder, you need the purple shim. That's what that's for. Okay, so sorry, you know, I kind of, I was looking right at it and still, I guess, wasn't paying attention basically. So let's just keep this over here with the 2D folder. We're gonna try each one of them. Uh, this one has a floral, and this time I'll use the butterfly on that one because I use not the butterfly on the other one. Okay, and we have some papers. I don't know what I want to do with these. Again, these are thinner than cardstock, so just so you have know that. I'm probably just gonna cut this with my, you know, just cut it. Uh, let's see. Ooh, I don't know how I want to use this. I want to save this as much as I can, of course. So let's just say that I'm just gonna use scissors. Uh, I'm probably gonna end up grabbing more things than just that. You probably wanna cut it nicely also, because if you think about it, you're gonna run it through this embossing fold and then I'm gonna trim it up, but I guess you can do always do that. So I'm just gonna cut this one and another strip that's similar. And then I'll straighten it up afterwards. All right, so first thing we're gonna try, sorry about that noise. Let's do the 3D embossing folder. And it doesn't matter, the paper is double-sided, which is nice. I noticed that, I'm like, ooh, I like double-sided paper. Because especially if you do something fun where it might have a little trick where you have to do it one way or the other. So it does not matter which way this is facing in here. I'm gonna try to do it straight, though. 
and folded edge in. Oh, this is nice. Already. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now why I like this already. <laughs> if you're gonna do something like this. Um, you know what? That's probably my mail band. I'll help you right back. Sorry about that. So the reason I like this already is I didn't have to push it with my body. Sometimes the diamond press, like it doesn't want to go in. So as I'm turning, I'm pushing with my thumb or trying to get my body in there to kind of try to push it. And it's already going in. So um, that's nice. Hold on. Let me stick this down again. I should be able to use it without even touching it, as you can see. But I will put my hand here. It's very quiet. Well, as far as... Oh, <laughs> it's very quiet. Ah. Okay. So 3D embossing, it looks beautiful. The paper, this happens every time. Well, think about when you emboss, I guess it does do that sometimes it warps, but every time I've used one of these kind of mini machines with something like this and it warps, it just does it. Guys, I don't know what to tell you. It's a little bit wrinkly, warpy here. I don't know if you can see that. Really pretty though. I mean, that works great. I love their 3D embossing folders. So you can use it on either side, emboss or deboss. Of course, I like this side. So that's really nice. Let's try this 2D embossing. And again, we're gonna need the um, folder for that. Again, the paper is double-sided, so it doesn't matter which side you put up or down, but if you um, want it a certain way, you always wanna pay attention where the recess and where it pushes up, right? So if it pushes up, you want your paper, the pretty side facing away from that, right? From the part that's going up into the paper. So this and the shim, is how we handle this one and again look at how easy i'm not even doing anything i just say it was quiet but i hear a little eh, eh. okay let's get that see how that turns out very pretty not as um deep i don't know if you can kind of see that so this is the deboss side the emboss side and i don't know if you can tell the difference between a 3d one oopsie can you see that Sorry guys, I'm trying to get a little bit closer. I don't know where to go, where the lighting is, or... Yeah, how about that? Okay, works great, that's awesome. Okay, so I grabbed also one of these little cut and emboss folders I probably won't use on my item here, but I do want to try it out for you guys because this should do its own thing. And you know what? It does not say in the book what to do about that. Let me see. It's pretty thin. I have a feeling you're still gonna have to put it with this. Uh, we'll try it. Okay, I'll do this one in yellow paper. Do we have yellow paper here? Just cut a little square. Hopefully that's enough. Like I said, it should be a three inch square. And this should also be cut to size, I think, before you run it through. But let me try to do it by itself. Let's try it. Yeah, no, I just ran through and nothing happened. So you need your purple shim. There we go. Now I feel a little tightness. This is so cute. So this makes like a little three inch piece. Again, if you need it to be a certain way, make sure you're paying attention to that. But other than that, there's our little cut and emboss. Cute little embossing here. Cuts out the little aperture. Cute little element. So that works out great. And does have a piece of foam in here. Do not pick that foam out or do anything. That's to help you push out the piece that's stuck in there. Um, okay, so we tried all those. Very good. And I grabbed this because I figured this will be a fun thing to use with all the different uh, things that are in here. So I am going to try and trim one of these out because guess what? Your folder is not long enough to trim this out. So I'm gonna have to show you how to do it and then turn it around and run the rest of it through. So there's that. There's this guy that I don't know if it's, it should work for this, right? Isn't that the whole point? Let me see. Ooh, they brought it right to the edge. So yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna cut out both of those and I think I'm gonna cut out this base thing. So I think those will be good things to try. Again, all from the compendium. Oh, come on. I don't want to rip this just in case I return it. Oh, you know why? Because there's tape, extra tape in here so it holds it down. There we go. All right, so let's try this guy because I know, ooh, we're gonna have to treat this one a little special. All right, is this even long enough? Oh, very good. Oh, I told you I was gonna measure this paper, right? So it does appear to be, what is going on here? I don't know what this is measuring. These numbers are <laughs> six by four. Uh, yeah, it's eight inches square. So I'm gonna take a piece from here, I guess. So far, so good. Again, I mean, there's so many things coming out. I guess it just depends on how you want to spend your money, where your value is. I know with the, um, the diamond press one, one of the questions on the survey that went after I watched the video was, would you pay $49.95 for this? And I said, no. <laughs> so 
Um, I don't know. Oh, this will be interesting. I'm gonna run it through like this. The die is just facing up, I don't know, or you can do it face down. Actually, I'm gonna turn it over because in the picture they showed the die on top of the paper, right? So I'm gonna run it through. But what I just noticed is that maybe, oh, it's moving. The paper's shifting. Ugh, I shouldn't have cut the paper so exact. Darn it. Okay, make a little, uh, little, get yourself a little more paper than I did. It's totally moving. It's gonna be all crooked. That, that shifted a lot. I've never seen that. Look at that. Let's try it again with a bigger piece of paper. It's gonna have to go super wider, guys. Don't uh, do what I did. Trying it out. We never know. Okay. Was that shorter? Oh, you know what? <laughs> okay, it's fine. Uh, what I was gonna say is that you can actually shove it through here, this space, right, to make it longer. So let's go ahead and do this and then um, see what happens. Again, how much it shifts. This one's giving me a little more resistance than like anything else I've tried already. And I didn't shift that time. Uh, of course, that's cool. it's just fine. Okay, so what I'm saying is let's hold on to this and try to push it through this top part. But you know what? That's gonna be too, too much. I'm just turning it over. You saw that, I'm just turning around this other edge. Let's get it going. If you think you need to tape it down because it's gonna shift or it has shifted, then do that. I'm not going to, but I might learn my lesson that maybe I need to, but that's okay. I'm gonna hold that down and see if this works because otherwise, how are you supposed to cut this thing up? I'm gonna go backwards now. I don't need to go the whole way through. Okay. Ah, and I just eyeballed it just wrong, right? When I uh, rolled it back through. I don't know if you can see, it barely missed. Which, that's fine, I'll just cut it out myself. I missed this little section, even though it imprinted, it just didn't quite get it. I just didn't want to roll all the way through and then possibly mess up what I already did over here, right? If it wasn't lined up right. But there we have a little quilling die flower. I'm just gonna trim that around. So, again, it's not long enough, so you do have to make an adjustment if this is the only machine you have for that. They should probably make a longer, uh, this guy. Because even if you do it sideways, obviously it's not gonna work. Okay, so we have that. We'll try it out in just a minute. What else do we wanna roll or cut? I'm gonna cut. Um, let's cut this rolled flower. And do I have more purple paper? I'll cut it from this yellow, but I'm gonna have to go in my stash and get more paper because obviously this didn't work out too well. I need more paper. Again, this is right on there, but that's all I can do. Uh, let's put this in here and make sure that it's gonna cut all the edges. This one is right at the edges. Ooh. I'm trying to eyeball it up here and make sure it's gonna cut. Supposedly they made it so that this all works. We'll see. Ugh, my paper's too big. I don't know if this is gonna work, you guys. I think this is not for this machine, possibly. Let's see what happens. I just wanna see how much I can get it in there because it might not work when I get to the die. Oh my goodness. Oh, it took it. <laughs> that is too funny. It just cleared it. That sounds horrible. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we are with the problems already. You saw that? That does not work, but this will fit back in. It just popped out the back. The little casing came out. Pop it back in. All right, well, it's not broken, so that's good. <laughs> Do not use this in your mini, I don't think, because it's not worth it. What if it does mess up something on the inside and the sides? I mean, I don't know. It went through. It cut. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. This is weird. All right, so it just missed the very corner of that one. Maybe there's another way to finagle this in here that I'm not seeing. I mean, it kind of has to be like this. I mean, it's just, I mean, that's basically what I did. I don't know. Okay, so there's that one. And then we're gonna cut this long guy here. I hate to return this whole thing because I do kind of like it, but at the same time, that's not gonna be the reason I return it just because that one die doesn't work because I have plenty of die cutting machines. We all know that. Um, okay. I need to get one more piece of paper that's gonna be wide enough for this and I will be right back. 
Okay guys, so I just cut another piece of the purple paper the exact width of this because we're going to use that fancy die. Sorry about the lighting. It is what it is. And I'm just going to put this face down on here. And hopefully this one doesn't move. If this one shifts, then we're going to be in big trouble because I don't see how else you're going to do this. But let's get that in there. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> this is a little tighter. All right, now I am going to have to pull up the big guns, hold it down. Oh, what a bummer, guys. I don't know. Okay. And look how warped the folder is. Just showing you. But again, it'll keep working. And then once you don't want it, let's say maybe next time I'll run it through this way to cut because that way it'll bend it back the other way, okay? So let me get this out of here. Oh, interesting. The very end did not cut. It's still stuck to my paper. It's supposed to cut. I'm lifting this very carefully. <laughs> uh, what I'm going to do is just cut that with scissors, but it did not cut, which is weird because that's just the back end of the thing. It should have just cut straight through, right? It left a little bit on there. This kind of bothers me, you guys, because I kind of want to keep the box. <laughs> I don't know. I know some people on my comments are like, just return the whole thing, you know, <laughs> when they saw the unboxing of it. So, obviously, not a fan. But look at that. I mean, it did cut out every single little bit. I don't even have anything I think I need to knock out. So that's pretty good. That's some good pressure. Now, the diamond press machine, I think, would do basically the same. Obviously, it's a smaller item, but I've had other things where I pushed through there. I never really had to, like, run it through again. But, okay. So we basically tried everything as far as that. So let's get a card together. I'm gonna get some pieces and see what it is that we wanna do as far as this sketch to copy one of these. And then um, we'll roll the flowers and I'll probably cut out another purple flower just to have something else in purple. And I will be right back. Okay guys, I hope the lighting is okay. It's a little dark for me, but I, I feel like this is better than turning on some other lights and making it washed out. So I had to go through and I, like I said, I wanted to pick uh, sketch. So I picked this one. It's a five by seven card base and I picked this one because I had cut out so many of those long kind of strips. I figured this will work for us. And then we have like little flowers instead of just like one circular thing. We still have to do a sentiment. So as you can see, it's super basic. They don't tell you the sizes. So I'm assuming and what I was watching on like HSN, she would mat things, but then the mat had a mat. So like here, there's only one line. So that would assume there's only one mat here on the card base. But I matted the mat, so we'll talk about that in a minute. I matted this thing, and then we'll see what we do here. I'm not really sold on what to do in this middle part. And then we have another little sentiment, which we will do, because I realized we didn't use any of the nesting dies or, like, some of the other things. But basically, I was just trying to try out, like, the most intricate die that they had and things like that so you would know about the Gemini, how it works with the Gemini Mini. So this is what we're going for. And then I went through my papers. I was figuring I need some pattern paper. And I went to look for the ones that had yellow and purple, and there are lots. I mean, even this one on front, I mean, it has more other colors in there too, but there's one that's just more purples. So we have this yellow purple. We have a couple, you know, this one would have been fine with the green. Um, just pick something. And I picked, again, the flower, this one, with the really pretty flowers. I'm gonna put this back up here before I misplace it. I tried to clean up a little bit, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, so here we are. So I'm not gonna talk quite about this yet, The what I came up with for that. Um, I kind of want to scatter it so it's not as obvious. This is really cute. Hmm, that could have gone on there somewhere, but we're not using it. We need to make our flowers. So I'm just going to quill these up. Of course, it doesn't come with a quilling tool, even though this is like the cheapest, cheesiest quilling tool from Crafters Companion. They probably could have thrown one of these in there, but it's not really about quilling, so I can see why they didn't. Um, they got to draw the line somewhere, right? Is like where, what we're including. Um, and I cut out one purple flower. So all I'm going to do is put the flower on the very tip of my quilling tool all the way down and you can roll up towards you whatever because with this one it really it's basically the same on both sides but obviously you know with a tool like this oh that's the other thing you know what you probably want two of them layered up I totally forgot about that um you know what we're gonna do because I'm not gonna take the time to do that I'm just going to layer one over this other one when I started rolling it I wanted you to see that it started just rolling on itself what happens a lot of times with quills as I'm rolling I don't know if you can see they're both on top of each other they're just on top of each other so it's just one row of flowers it's not really doing what it needs to well you know what it's doing it now so let's just keep going I'm gonna put some 
we do like to kind of layer them up. I have a video on quilling. I will include it at the end of this um, in the videos that are there. This is just all-purpose glue. I'm going to add some now. I should have added it before because that's what I like to do. I'm just going to run it down this edge. You can put double-sided sticky tape there and just go with that. I'm going to keep rolling it. I'm sorry about this lighting. So if you guys have yours and you've gotten it out to play with, let me know what you think. I doubt anybody got it yesterday and is already using it. Usually I keep things for a while before I even think about it, but um, this one I wanted to get it reviewed for you guys. So I'm going to pull that out. I'm still holding this. going to push it down in the center. And this glue dries pretty quickly, but again, if you wanted to um, mess with these more than just what it is, you can definitely do that. I'm just going to start opening it up now. And this one's very uh, tall, so there's still a lot more to go if I wanted to really smash it down. Cute. I don't know if it's you know, my favorite quilling flower, but again, you can mess with the petals, come in here, even use your quilling tool, like get it in there and give it a crimp if you really want to turn them, you know? Do it with your hand, doesn't matter. However you want. We're gonna do the same thing with the purple one. And then with this one, I am so sorry about this lighting. Let me see if I get closer, maybe it'll be less noticeable, which I don't know if that's the case, but <laughs> all right. With this one, you're just going to roll, roll, roll till you get to the middle. Um, and I don't know if you wanna do that with the quilling tool. You normally don't have to with these. You just kind of start rolling them, rolling them, rolling them. Right, if you can see, I'm just kind of going around here. I'll add some glue here and there. These basically, you're gonna stick them down to that center part, so that's kind of where you put the glue. You can, I guess you, you can use a quilling tool with these. I've never done that. I just roll them with my hands because why they're rolled flowers and the other ones are quilled flowers. I'm gonna add a little more glue. This is taking a long time and I told you guys I'm still gonna make an envelope. Ooh, all right. <laughs> Let's go for it. The reason I normally don't put glue and I'm doing it right now though um, is because at the end when you get there and you set it on that little middle part, it might want to unravel. But this glue, like I said, is kind of quick drying, but not that quick drying. So it's not going to be the biggest problem. So now in this very center, this base piece, I'm just going to put a good dab of glue. And to be honest, I probably should use this call out one because this stuff is thick and it's great, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is just place that on there and you're going to have to hold it. <laughs> So I'm pr pushing the middle of the flower into that little base area. And I'm going to have to hold this for a little while. So when I come back, I'll uh, open it up for you guys. But I'm going to hold it until it doesn't want to move anymore. Okay, I'm trying to cut out this area that's super bright over here. So hopefully this will be better. So we have our little flowers. And while I was rolling these, I kind of put this other one between, uh, put my leg on it. So it will hold it down. I'll be over here, I guess. And so what we're going to do is just kind of mess with the petals. Again, you can use your tools, something that helps you bend them back however you like. If you wanted to um, do some distressing before you did this, that would be great too. And just get it all rolled up and made all... This is a cute one. I don't know, it, maybe it's just me. I feel like rolled flowers are probably my favorite. I did really like some of the quilling dyes I used the other day though that were Crafts of Companion and Anna Griffin and stuff. So anyway, I'm not gonna mess too much with it because this is already going on far too long. All right. We're going to start gluing some things together. Let me try to see. Where am I? This way? All right. So I have a purple piece of the same purple paper. This is a 5x7 card base. So make sure you're opening it the right way. 5x7 card base. So what I did was I cut this piece. Not that it tells you there, but I just decided it should be... Uh, so 5x7, so I wanted a quarter inch smaller. So it's only an eighth inch all around. So I have it at 4 and 3 quarters by 6 and 3 quarter paper. And I kind of like to get the glue towards the edge, but not too much because I don't like when it kind of seeps out. And we're just going to, and you can use um, a, uh, what's a tape runner or whatever. Wouldn't that have been nice if this had tape runner in it? I think that would have been a good addition. They could have thrown that in there. Let me try to move over a little more this way so that this sunlight stops doing what it's doing. I think it's creeping more and more this way. <laughs> That's the problem. I, I'm going to be at the edge of my table by the time I'm done here. Okay, so we have that. And then this paper is one-sided, or single-sided. It is five, what did I say, four and three quarters. So this one's four and a half by six and a half. So it's just a quarter inch altogether smaller 
than the mat that we just used. And it came out a little different, so I'm like, hmm, I don't know. It seems more obvious that this one has more space around it than the white, so I don't know. All right, so if we look at our picture, we have then a band that goes this way, and then we have, I'm oh, sorry, a band that goes this way, and then we have this top part. So this top part, I want it to be this. So I measured this. This is just a little bit smaller than three inches by a little bit smaller than six inches. So I did make this three by six. That way it just mats around pretty good. Now, I can go get my spray from the Dollar Tree and I don't feel like going over there. You can run this through a Xyron however you want because it has a lot of small little things. But I'm just going to, at this point, use this one and I'm just going to put it wherever I feel like and then mat it down. But again, that spray glue from the Dollar Tree is very good. It's a beacon brand, so I don't see why it wouldn't be any good. I'm just adding some here and there, right? Just trying to that 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 with this really small applicator, which is from Crafters Companion. You can find stuff like this all over AliExpress, eBay, those kind of places for little tiny droppers like this. Uh, let's see here squeeze bottle. And again, I'm just putting some here, there, wherever. That's fine. And then I'm going to mat this onto whoop, my yellow paper. The glue does give you a little bit of time to play with it, but since this is so delicate, I don't really want to have to move it much. That's pretty good. And if it looks off, what I'll do is I'll trim the yellow paper, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If it ends up looking a little kind of funky, just cut off the yellow paper so it looks a little straighter. And this word party right here is basically up on its own, so that's interesting. <laughs> Let me try to hold that down. Okay, I'm going to have to mess with that a little more in a little bit. And so then that band that goes across, I cut a bunch of purple things. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of this, but maybe, well, because this feels like it should go up and down like this, right? In this direction. So I think I'm going to use the butterflies. Even though there's no butterflies or aren't any butterflies anywhere else on this, I think I'm going to use this paper and just put it across there. And then this one. Maybe popped up. I'm going to have to pop this up just to give it some... I don't know. So let me trim this down. Of course, I'm using my paper trimmer because there's no other way to trim anything here. And I'll be right back. I'm going to trim it a little closer to the butterfly edges and then obviously we need to cut some of this off and um, I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I trimmed this down just a smaller and then uh, five inches wide and it's a little bit crooked and I'm, it's probably because you know I should have trimmed this before I did anything else but that's okay. Um, oh, you know what? Maybe it's cuter on this side. I kind of like the deboss side. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to put my glue on the side where it's popped up. I don't know why, that just looked totally different to me. I like it. And I'm just going to put that down here, kind of like in the picture. Like I said, I it came out a little bit crooked. I don't know what happened, but that's okay. <laughs> so there's that. And then this, all of this is, is extra pop dot stuff from like whenever you remove it from these things. And if someone looks in the back of their card and complains about it, you know what? Give them my card back. All right. You don't deserve it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to take this and put it right here. Well, let me look at the picture. Yeah, it's centered centered up and down but over to the left and hopefully you know I'll move it just a little bit over because I have all those flowers I need to stick down and I don't want it to just be on the very edge let me make sure this thing is okay and I'm gonna stick that down okay got that so now we have all these flowers and I don't have to use all of them especially because two of them are purple they kind of I mean well, yellow that kind of drives me nuts I feel like maybe I should have had another one that was a different color or maybe two purple ones. It's what we have, guys. So I'm just going to go for it. And then we need to make a sentiment that goes down here in this area. And it looks like this is a birthday card. <laughs> now that I'm looking at it, I don't know. So let's just glue these down. And I'm just going to put, like, a good amount of glue. Put that guy here. This is not my favorite flower, I'll be honest. Maybe if I had layered it up, I'd be a little happier with it. I kind of want to lay it sideways, too, because it has a really big bottom. <laughs> Look at this. So I don't know about that, but let me just put glue wherever, and hopefully that glue will be enough to hold it down. And like I said, I'm going to try to put it sideways. So I'm going to let that sit 
Did I even do this straight? I wasn't really paying attention to that. Okay, I'm not gonna mess with those. I'm gonna put this to the side because now we have to come up with some kind of sentiment, right? So, we still have these guys that we didn't use. This is taking forever, you guys. Oh my gosh. We haven't used any of the uh, embellishments, but we'll go to that when we're done. Um, I was wondering if there's leaves. I was wondering if I should add leaves to this thing, but we'll see. But there are leaves on here I totally forgot about. Um, and then we have these little layered up things that we'll use for our sentiment. And then let's find a sentiment. We're going to stamp it. And the top box, we have all our sentiments. This lighting situation is just ridiculous. <laughs> okay, what do we have? Congratulations, uh, wishing you a wonderful day, a special day, much love, a happy birthday. Hello, get well soon. Small happy birthday. We do have the words happy birthday here, but I already used some, no, it needs to be something like this. I missed your birthday. Sorry, where's the sorry? Did it just say I missed your birthday? No, there's got to be a word sorry here because it was for your loss. Huh. I don't know. Okay, so let's see. I thought the word sorry would be here and it's not. So I don't... I missed your birthday for your loss. I don't know. Do I... Am I missing it? I guess I'm going to do wishing you a happy birthday. This is huge though. I don't want to use that. Maybe just this tiny little happy birthday. Fine. We'll just go with this. And we're going to stamp that on some white paper that does not, there's no, it doesn't come with white paper. I don't know why there wouldn't be a white paper. I guess we can stamp on the opposite side of some of the printed paper, but that's kind of a bummer. Let me go grab a piece of white paper. We're going to stamp that. We're going to cut it out and layer it. And then we'll be done. block here. It's probably bigger than I need because obviously this is a very small word. We have our little happy birthday here. I'm just going to stick it on this block. I have just some black finesse alcohol proof dye doesn't really matter because we're not going to use alcohol markers on it or anything but just stamp it if it doesn't look good we can just turn the paper over yeah i don't like that i'll show you kind of looks a little bit grainy kind of messed up so i'm going to stamp it again on this opposite side and hopefully that's better yeah it's a little better still a little grainy again this is actually um, crafting plan stamping paper, so it should take it really well. But the stamps are acrylic stamps, which repel the ink. You know what we should make stamps out of? The, something that repels the ink. That doesn't make any sense, but they're less expensive to make, so that's what that is. Um, let me get one of these guys out. I'm gonna run this through the machine. I'm not gonna spend time showing that, because obviously, like, just the reason I didn't show you cutting paper, because you can cut paper, right? Um, I don't want to waste your time on that. So what I'm going to do is take this, whatever layering die will work here. Oh, this is such a, okay. Um, so we have ovals. I think I want to go with the third to the smallest oval. Oh my gosh. This is going like, to break my nails. I'm going to use this guy for the word happy birthday. And then I'll cut out uh, one of these cuter ones like this one, the one that's right after that. And this is the thing, I only chose two colors, so we have to use yellow or purple. I guess I'll do yellow, because there's a lot of purple. Nah, I'll do purple, because I like it better. So I'll cut this out in purple, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, the sun kind of came this way, and it went back that way, and so I'm just moving things around. So, we have our card still. All I did was run through these guys, and I'll just show you how I did that. I did the purple with the little cute zigzaggy thing, and then the happy birthday, just with that one same shape that I showed you guys. Um, as far as embossing things, like if you wanted to emboss that ring, I don't know. There's no nothing embossing about this, uh, so I guess it's not available yet. Or maybe it's too you can't put an embossing rubber embossing thing in there. Um, but it did get a little bit of a embossing around the very edge. Oh, wait for that. I don't know if you can see that. So we're just gonna layer this up, and I'm just doing a quick job of this. I would normally put the glue on the back of this thing, but it's small and I want to just move on. We're almost there, guys. We're almost done. A lot of inking. If you have other inks and you want to, you know, distress things, that's great. And I'm going to put this right here, I guess, over that word party because um, it's kind of bothering me anyway. And that was it, basically, for the card. I'm going to put it just mostly on this corner. Something like that. I'm not going to move the card because these are probably not dry yet. Uh, it's a big lump of 
flowers there. So we have to make a envelope. Not for this because this is way too thick to go in an envelope, but because I want to show you guys how to use the envelope uh, tool. So let me move some of these things. Um, let me put this stuff away so I don't lose anything and then I'll bring out the stuff that we will need for the envelope. Okay guys, I know this is a totally different angle than what I normally work at, but like I said, I'm at my kitchen table. We have this thing all spread out here, which is really nice. It's kind of cool and I just keep reaching over there to grab what I need, right? As far as the compendium, but um, whew, I am tired. I had to get myself some flan because I bought a flan the other day. Usually I make my own, but, and no one's eating it. So I'm like, I gotta eat this flan. So good, so good, okay. This is your scoring board, envelope maker, not sure. I told myself, don't say another word until you finish eating your flan. So there we go. This is not easy to open. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is sealed in there. Okay. So for a five by seven card, I was reading the back of this thing. It says I need a 10 by 10 piece of paper, which of course is not in this kit. Um, so if I turn this over, it has a bunch of information here for making card, um, sorry, envelopes in inches and centimeters. So we're gonna use the inches. The first thing is to select your card size, which for me was the five by seven, which is the biggest one they make. And it says five and one eighth by seven. So I'm not sure if it's just giving extra room or what that's about, or maybe because uh, European sizes are a little bit different with their A4 paper and we have A2 size paper. So anyway, so it says to get, get a 10 inch square piece of paper. So you select the card size, you trim the paper to correct paper size, which is 10 by 10. This little guy slides out. And the only reason I know that I was, I would have tried to rip it off. This was I was watching Craig. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Actually, it's not even held down right now. So I guess they assume you're going to do that. Try to rip it out, but it slides off. So be careful. Um, and so again, so it's a 10 by 10. Align paper left to scale mark, okay? And it tells me the scale mark that I need to use. It says right here, scale mark is four and three eighths. I have the worst eyes, guys. I need to go get my eye check, which I told you, but I haven't done it yet. Four and three eighths. So on the side here, these are the scales. I guess what they call scale mark, it doesn't say that, it just is inches. We're going to go to four and three eighths, which is a bummer because I guess it's this one. Hold on, four and three eighths. Let's see. One eighth. Oh, this one. I suppose. <laughs> All right. It's not marked on there, so I'm just having to eyeball that. So four and three eighths. I'm gonna take off my glasses. I'm gonna get really close because it's really hard to see. So one eighth. Two eighths, which is a quarter, three eighths is this mark right here. So I'm gonna put this paper on here and then score. So there's a, a divot here at the very beginning. That's where you're gonna score. And then you're supposed to turn the paper 90 degrees, which is just basically to the next corner. And you are supposed to line up the line that you just made with this score line right here. So the line that we just made, we're gonna line it up there. Score guide, and then score again. In that same spot, we're just gonna keep going. And then it says repeat steps five through six, which is basically, well, it doesn't tell you to turn 90 degrees, but we're just gonna go to the next corner, right? The next one. And again, line it up at four and three eighths, which this time was easier for me to find. Oopsie, it moved on me a little bit. Four and three eighths, put your pen or your bone folding, folding tool, whatever you want to call it, scoring tool, right in that crack again. And then again, turn 90 degrees. So one last corner, this time we're going to line up that line again, again, score guide, oopsie, and one more score. Okay, that's not hard. I mean, it, you do have to pay attention to what you're doing, but that's not hard. Then you're going to bring this little guy in and you have a notch and you have a corner. So notch is what we want to use right now. We're going to bring this paper in and you just made a corner, right? Uh, you just made a triangle, you know, corner shape. You're gonna line that up into your notcher so that it's perfectly lined up against those two lines and push it down. And this is really cute because, ooh, maybe I shouldn't put this on the glass. Look at that. It makes a beautiful little notch for your envelope, which is lovely. 
So I'm gonna try to do this other part a little quicker. Now that we know what we're doing, we gotta get this going. This video is gonna be an hour and a half long for a card. Well, it wasn't really just a card, huh? We reviewed that whole other thing. Let's go in there, buddy. All right, there you go. Okay, now, if you want to round your folder, your, um, sorry, your envelope, you can do that. I think I'm gonna fold this, cause this paper has a texture. It's like um, basil paper or whatever they call it. I'm gonna turn this around, cause I want the texture to be on the outside. And then just fold on your score marks, right? And with glue that is not in the kit, you will glue your paper. Now, if you want this above, which probably looks better, to be honest, for me, I would probably cut this off right here. I know sometimes uh, Sarah just tucks it back, but I kind of want to, I'm just gonna cut it, sorry. <laughs> if that doesn't look good to y'all, do whatever you like. Like I said, she trims, she bends it back sometimes. And we are gonna put some glue, and I'm gonna put it on the very edges of this because I don't know how much overlap there is. It looks like there's actually a pretty good amount of overlap. So there's that, hold that down. Nice envelope, and if you want to round, put the corner rounder, you can just put that, I'm gonna hold this, try to do this all at once, hold that there. And we just rounded the corner off of the uh, envelope. It's not really necessary to do these other edges because you don't see them anyway, but, so you have a corner rounder in here too, which is nice. That's a nice little tool. Um, okay, so basically I was gonna start putting things away. I forget I'm filming over here. Let me grab my card just to show you that it perfectly fits a five by seven card with some extra room. Hopefully you can see that there's room at the top. Of course, I mean, I could put it in here, but let's not mess with our <laughs> flowers that aren't gonna fit. But very lovely. I mean, that looks really nice. It works out really well. Okay. The last thing we can do is a box, right? There's box templates. I'm not gonna make a box, but I'll walk, oh, well, the other thing is an envelope liner. Let's say you wanna make an envelope liner, you guys. All you're gonna do is literally just take these uh, templates and it'll be on the video there and trace it onto your paper. Hopefully, like this big one, this is for a six by six envelope. Um, your paper is not big enough. You're gonna have to have paper yourself. So obviously the, like the 10 by 10 for the envelope, it came from a 12 by 12 piece of paper that I cut down to 10 by 10. So all you're gonna do is trace this. You can put your little pencil marks here. You know that you're gonna bone fold that and uh, put it into your envelope. It looks like what they want you to do is put this in your envelope before you fold your envelope up. So you're gonna put it on top, right? If this was still open, this isn't the right one, but this would be all in there. Lay it on there and then fold your envelope, okay? Whenever you cut your paper out that this follows this template. Um, boxes, same thing. You're just gonna trace it. And you're gonna flip it because there's only half a box as you can see. So this is the box base for a six by six card blank. This one you can use your paper, it fits. You don't have to go out and look for more paper, I hope, right? So what you do is put it on here just barely fits, I don't know. It might be a little, oh, there goes something. Uh, again, just trace with a pencil all of this, trace your scoring lines, and you're just gonna cut around the whole shape, right? You're gonna flip this probably, and then trace the rest of it. So that's how you use these, okay? So it's only half a template, you're gonna have to flip it. And then cut it out, fold it on the lines that you drew in, you know, inside here, and you're gonna have a box base. You're gonna do the same thing for the box top, and now you're gonna have a nice little box that you can um, put your card in, right? Because the card's gonna be kind of thick. So if you need more information on that, I will make a video specifically on the envelope liner and the box uh, creation. But other than that, we are done, guys. I don't know what you think. Um, it's great if you're a beginner. I think it's really fun as far as that for me. I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or not. I, I might keep it. <laughs> Again, I have until January to think about that. Uh, basically right now with HSN, you can, uh, if you order anything right now through Christmas and beyond there, you have until January 3rd to return it in, or to return it. So really cute. I do love this, uh, the way the card came out. I mean, it's a nice card, right? If you didn't know much about card making, I think this helps. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them. Please let me know what you think of the kit, what you think of your kit if you have it. We didn't even really use the stamps. I mean, there's lots of uh, the pearls. 
like all those little half pearls um, to decorate with. Maybe I'll, eh, I think I'm gonna leave it alone because it's already, it's pretty busy. But you can add some pearls here, there, wherever. There's lots of fun things in there that we didn't even get to. So thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.